Are you owed a relatively small amount of cash from a friend or loved one? Do you have a small grievance with an individual or a company? Most importantly, do you want to take the law into your own hands in a quicker and less formal way? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you might want to know, is small claims court right for you? Naked? You described it as a man key. Even I could beat you up. Shows like Judge Judy present themselves as traditional small claims hearings, but technically it's just arbitration. However, there are plenty of reasons to give real small claims a try. It's a lot less formal with more relaxed rules for evidence, making it a speedier trial with less delays. It's less formal, but you should still dress presentable. Absolutely, the stakes may be lower, but because of that, you may have to represent yourself. That's right, small claims mean small money, so most lawyers don't even bother. That is, if they're even allowed to represent a small claims case at all. In Michigan and California, lawyers are prohibited from representing clients in small claims court. So what are the advantages of taking your case to small claims? Advantage number one, you don't have to pay a lawyer more than your claim is worth. Get out of here and give me that, Psh, whatever. Advantage number two, filing, preparing, and presenting a small claims case is relatively easy. The complicated legal forms and language found in other courts is kept to a minimum. All right. <laughs> to start your lawsuit, you just fill out a simple form. I can do that. Who can't? Advantage number three, small claims doesn't take nearly as long. Your case is usually heard within two to three months and the hearing takes about 15 minutes. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, next, next. All right, let's see the progress now in regular court. Number three out of one million. All right, are we ready to proceed? So what can you file? Usually breach of contract, a relatively small unpaid debt, recover for minor injuries after an accident, recover money spent to repair or replace damaged or destroyed property, recover a security deposit, recover unpaid rent, and nuisance. No, you can't sue your buddy for being too annoying, but let's say a factory nearby makes too much noise and keeps you up all night, that's a nuisance and you can take it to small claims. Now let's talk about what you can't file. I would like to file for divorce from Law by Mike. I don't know you and you can't file a divorce in small claims. Then I want guardianship of our boy. Not my son and you can't do that either. Then I want back pay on my child support. No, no, family law cases cannot be filed in small claims. Also, I do not know this woman and I'm pretty sure this is a fake baby. You also can't file name changes, bankruptcies, or probate cases, and probably shouldn't file serious personal injury cases either. <laughs> ah! Ow. Oof. Don't file that here. Okay. Many small claims courts may have other restrictions on claims, so check your local court's rules online. And remember, it's small claims, which means there's a limit on how much you can ask for, usually less than five to $10,000. If you want more money, buddy, you better take it to the big leagues. Wow, getting the paperwork for the small claims case was so easy. Getting the paperwork oh is easy. Now we need to see if you even have a good case or not. How long have you been back there? It's my video. I'm everywhere and nowhere. So how do I know if the case is good? Easy, make sure you can prove everything you're claiming. How do I prove it? Do you have any witnesses, documents, and other evidence? Yeah. Have you looked up the laws related to your claim to make sure that you have evidence for each necessary element to win? Huh? Do it! Pro tip, check out the civil jury instructions in your state. It will spell out what you need in simple language. If there's a specific type of small claims case you want us to dive into, let us know in the comments. We might do a video on it. Who are you talking to? Are you still here? Go! Make sure you file quickly as statute of limitations varies between states. Statute of limitations is the time limit you have to file certain cases. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I hate this bit, I don't get it. It's like you have to act fast because there's a limited amount of time to file. So why am I running? You're uh, a acting fast, <laughs> you know? Ugh, I need new writers. These are all things to consider when deciding if small claims is right for you, but no question may be more important than, does the person you're suing even have the money? According to my calculations, if the person you're suing doesn't have the funds, it may be more trouble than it's worth. You may have to go through extra proceedings just to get them to pay, and even then they may not be able to. So make sure the other party even has a means to pay you back, otherwise you might be out of luck. Also remember that small claims should be a last resort. Judges won't look favorably on someone who didn't at least try to resolve the problem first. In fact, in some states, it's a requirement before you file. More things to consider before you file. 
Make sure you file your lawsuit in the correct jurisdiction, which usually means the state where the defendant resides or the state where the dispute arose. So if they're out of state, you may need to file in a court near them. Some exceptions to this rule may include if the claims relate to a contract that was signed in your state, if the claim is about a house or property that they own in your state, or if the out-of-state defendant got into a car accident with you in your state. That's right, if you get into a small fender bender in your state, you can file a claim regardless of where the person lives, but more serious injuries should be filed in regular court. My bones, all my bones are broken. Yeah, this one might be more expensive, so you better take it to the big leagues. Thanks, Mike. Now that we know the jurisdiction, we need to know where to find the right venue. No, not a concert venue. If correct jurisdiction is being in the right state, correct venue is being in the right county. And how do we know if we're in the right venue? It varies from state to state, but it's usually the county where the defendant resides or does business, or it could also be where the dispute arose. Play Freebird! Now that we know why and where to file, it's time to make sure we file correctly. Did you file it? Mike, you gotta stop. I could have spilled my soup. Did you file? Yes, it was super easy. I filled out the paperwork just like you told me. Good. Most small claim courts have a checklist of what you need to do and fill out on their website. There may be a small fee to file, but again, it's a very small fee. And if you're low income, you might be able to get that fee waived. If you slurp that soup one more time, I will freak out. Make sure the defendant receives all documents related to the case. Don't assume that everything was received and show up to court without confirming they were served. This could get your case postponed or dismissed, so try your best to verify it yourself or with the court before your hearing. My soup. Actions have consequences. Hopefully this video let you know if you should file your case with small claims and how to go about filing it. And click here to watch episode two, how to win your small claims case, unless it's not uploaded yet. It should be next week, unless you're in the future and it's, it's uploaded, so click here.